Hi, we're here at Dimension 3 with Jason Goodman of 21st Century 3D. Jason uh, basically was responsible for Call of the Wild 3D. Tell us a little bit about some of the interesting challenges to filming Call of the Wild 3D. Well, you know, it's always challenging to make a 3D production, and, and this was uh, this is basically the first completely live-action, independent, digital stereoscopic feature film. It was produced on location in Montana uh, from uh, February through March of 2008. And it so you did it in the summer? Yeah, no, it was extremely cold, a lot of snow. Um, many of the shooting days were outside literally in a blizzard. Uh, we were dealing with dogs, children, harsh conditions, low budget, all kinds of things that people would generally tell you to avoid. Now, Chris Lloyd was one of the stars of that. There were some particular challenges because of the budget as far as that goes. Well, he wasn't available to us for that many days. We had 14 days of shooting with Christopher Lloyd and the rest of the cast, so it was an extremely accelerated shooting schedule, and that was, that was hard on us as well. Now, the rig that you used for that was your own creation. Tell us a little bit more about that. There were two different types of cameras used on Call of the Wild. One of them was the side-by-side uh, -side 3DVX rig that we've had for several years. And one of them was a, a newly developed beam splitter rig based on some modified Panasonic HVX 200s. Now, you're using lithium batteries, and I know from practical experience, having done the Millennium Celebration, lithium doesn't like cold weather. You know, the batteries were the least of the problem. The cold weather mostly affected uh, the hard drives that the cameras were recording to. And, and, you know, listen, everything was a problem. The batteries were okay for the most part. We had a lot of batteries. And uh, it was really the hard drives. They're, they're designed to operate in about 45 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And we were regularly operating them at 7 degrees, 10 degrees. Maybe the warmest days were 14 degrees. Now, we've got a picture that we're going to have up on the screen in a second. And tell us a little about this picture and the particular technical way that you solved this problem. Yeah, well, this picture shows uh, Steadicam operator Katie Boyum. And you can see on the camera hard drives there are tow heaters stuck to the drives. So those are designed to be put into your boots. And they generate, I don't know, maybe 90 degree heat for a short period of time. And we stuck those all over the hard drives to, to keep them warm. And I actually would have several hard drives inside my jacket with heaters on them all day to keep them at temperature because once they would dip down too cold, you know, raising them up, it wasn't, you had no way to acclimate the drives to the temperature. So it was a very complicated logistical and technical challenge to keep the production running. Well, I've seen the movie. It came out fantastic. Right. You don't see any, any problems at all in the movie. Right. Uh, you've gotten through that, and I'm sure through others that you've done, you've ga garnered a lot of experience about 3D and 3D rigs. Mm -hmm. And now I understand you've come out with your own 3D rig. Yeah, that's right. Well, we, you know, we learned a lot from the first beam splitter unit that we built on uh, Call of the Wild. And you know, I, I'm really partial to the side-by-side -side cameras, but it's just really not possible to get the kind of small interocular spacing that you need to make all the different kinds of shots you need to make in a feature film. So we've resigned ourselves to designing beam splitters and uh, the first unit we made for Call of the Wild we dubbed the BX-1. We've got a BX-2 coming out next week. We're going to be showing it at Cinegear. Actually it's just a couple days from now. And that's the first uh, you know, stereoscopic recording device that we're going to offer for sale through 21st Century 3D. So you'll be able to rent it or buy it and uh, people have been showing a lot of interest. We, we looked around at a lot of the other rigs that are available and uh, applied some of the practical knowledge that we have, not just in terms of, you know, how it operates, but everything that goes into doing a production. Moving it around, putting it on steady cams, jibs, shipping it places. We really focused on making it as light and sturdy as it could possibly be and also having all the adjustability that you need. Uh, I think a lot of the rigs uh, that we've seen previously have been designed for you know high-end 35 millimeter cameras and cameras that are machined very precisely and the fact of the matter is most of the digital cameras that are being used today not to say that they aren't precise but they're manufactured in different ways that really requires a, a 3D beam splitter rig to have the ability to adjust all degrees of, uh, of motion and rotation to eliminate any sort of uh, relative differences between the two cameras viewpoints very horizontal offset that we're looking for Excellent. Thanks for talking to us so much, Jason. Good, you, uh, good luck on the next feature, and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much. Take care.